all those little white pegs are, are mm-hmm. called stops. Mm-hmm. And they're mm-hmm. all different sounds. There's, there are flutes, there are trumpets, there are um, sounds that sound almost like a string. And so you have to make decisions as an organist on which ones to use at which times during the piece. And so listening to uh, and understanding what has worked in the past can help to inform, not to dictate, because I think it's important that at the end of the day, as an artist, you figure out what makes most sense to you so that you're right. not just trying to copy something that's been done a, a thousand times already. I am so happy to be with you on Cloud Record Music Podcast and YouTube channel. It gives me great pleasure to spotlight my special guest, classical pianist, organist, Matthew Daly. You'll be charmed by our inspiring conversation. Don't go anywhere. And now, a Cloud Record Music Spotlight. Matt Daly is an exceptional upcoming classical pianist, organist, and instructor. A graduate of University of Maryland, Matthew studied under Dr. Loressa Diebo. He also studied organ with Dr. Dale Kadar, William Neal of the National Symphony Orchestra, and John Walker, former president of the American Gulf of Organists. Matthew's passion for the organ led him to serve as the church organist for several churches in the Washington, D.C. and New England area. Matthew continues to advance in his studies by accepting a full scholarship to Yale University and the Yale Institute of Sacred Music to study under Thomas Murray, where he acquired a second master's degree and received the Julia R. Sherman Memorial Prize for excellence in organ playing. In the spring of 2023, Magic completed his doctoral study at the University of Southern California, studying under Professor Sherry Rodas. Currently, Matthew enjoys serving as a worship team music director of Valgo Day Seven Day Adventist Church and organist, collaborator, artist at Lake Avenue Church. Now, I'm excited to have this captivating conversation with Matthew Daly, who is joining us from Los Angeles, California. Good evening, Matt, and welcome to Cloud Record Music Podcast. I am excited to have you here today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. How are you? I am doing fantastic. What is it like there in California? Uh, It is warm. I'm from the East Coast, so it's definitely a pleasant surprise still that it's January and it's it's warm here in L.A. Um, Ah. Can't complain. I'm coming, to, I'm coming to visit. I'm coming to visit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on out. Well, oh, great. Great. Thank you for the invite. Um, you know, we are about music and we love all type of music, but we have a special love for classical music. And you are a classical pianist and organist. And so we are looking forward to today. And I know the audience is going to enjoy this piece this afternoon with you. So here is my thought and my first question for myself and our audience's math. You have garnered overwhelming acclaims for your dynamic performances and unquestionable stage presence. When did you get the bug for classical music? How did this all begin for you? Well, it was pretty early on. Uh, My mom was a a classical musician herself. She plays, she teaches violin. And uh, when I was born, she was teaching piano. So I remember just as a toddler, um, just crawling around the piano when she was teaching in our home. uh, And afterwards, I would try to crawl on top of the, the piano bench if I could reach it best I could and just try to, you know, play some of the things that I was hearing. But I, I loved, I grew up listening to Beethoven and Mozart. She loved playing those sonatas. Um, and so I, I honestly don't even remember a time in my life where classical music was not a, a big part of what I was listening to. Wow. So basically, it started with you even before you were born, because you probably was playing all those sounds while she was pregnant, right? And you know Literally. what they said, when you when you sing to a, a, a person inside your tummy and, and, and playing to you, they probably come out doing the very same thing. <laughs> you know I'm, what I'm living doing. proof. I'm not a scientist, but it worked out for <laughs> us. That's for sure. 
That's great. Matt, as I said, you're a classical pianist and organist. Are you currently or have you ever played within an orchestra? Yes, and, and I, I love to. I'm currently playing in orchestra uh, fairly often. Um, one of my current jobs is I'm the organist and collaborative artist at Lake Avenue Church in Pasadena. And um, it's, it's fortunately, it's a church that has enough resources that they have their own orchestra. So about once a month, I would say, um, I'm on the organ or piano, usually organ, and um, orchestra's right there. They have some fantastic musicians um, that God brought to this church. And just last Friday, actually, uh, we had an all Bach concert. So they rented a harpsichord as well, and uh, we did some chamber music. The orchestra was there. We did some orchestra, organ, and choir, as well as orchestra, organ, choir, and congregation. So that's kind of my current orchestra, uh, most typical experience. Um, mm -hmm. I played in, in orchestras growing up as a young violinist, violist. Um, got to play in an orchestra at Carnegie Hall. John Rutter was conducting. We did the Mozart Requiem. Oh, uh, that wow. Was about, yeah, that was uh, maybe 10 years ago or so. And throughout college, having experiences to play um, concertos here and there. Um, usually as a pianist, uh, but I love multiple timbres. So getting to play with an orchestra and having just that vast array of uh, flutes and strings and brass and with everything, it's, it's a real joy for me. No, did I hear you correctly? Did you see you also violin? Uh, yes, I, I, so my mom's a violin teacher, so I started violin pretty much when I started piano. I mean, you're almost like a one man band, you know, you, you can do everything. <laughs> you can do a whole show by yourself. <laughs> well, I, I still have a plenty of things I'm still hoping to learn. Um, but I, I'm grateful that I've been able to, to learn a few instruments so far. And we'll see. I, I hopefully I have lots of living left in me and I can oh, pick I'm up sure you more do. instruments along the way. Yeah. Oh. Why not? Well, you know, I, I'm curious about this because each church has its own unique sound and the music director play a central role in developing the sound. How do you just, you know, describe the sound at Velo Drive Seven-Day Adventist Church? And am I pronouncing the name correctly? Is that Velo? It's uh, Vallejo. It's kind of Vallejo. strange. Vallejo. Vallejo. Yeah, Vallejo. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> Vallejo. <laughs> No, it's a strange name, and it's spelled B-A-L-L-E-J-O, so it, it trips everybody up. But um, it's a, a very blended service here. Um, you can kind of see we're right behind a bunch of pipes. Oh, wow. And the, the church back there. The, it's about half okay. the sanctuary. So it's, Thank you um, for the tour. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so it, it's set up, um, this is a, a very large Casavant pipe organ. Um, I think it has about maybe 80 ranks. And so it, it, for a long time, had a very classical, traditional sound as far as the worship music went at this church. They're celebrating their 100-year anniversary this summer, actually. So they've been around for a while. Um, recently, uh, they started to incorporate more contemporary music as well, uh, meaning uh, uh, like worship bands. And L.A. is such a diverse area, which is one of the things I love about this area as well. And so you have a lot of different cultures, lots of different ethnicities. This is also a very multi-generational church uh, from wow. lots of kids, lots mm -hmm. of seniors and everything in between. So it's very common on, on a given Saturday to find gospel music, classical music, Christian wow. contemporary music, all in one, one, half, one and a half hour service, basically. Mm. Now, do that church ever have a um, concert, like music concert, especially yes. classical music? Or Yeah, mm. so um, a couple of weeks ago, it was, it was the 20th. So yeah, about a week and a half ago, there was... Um, a concert for the contemporary, the worship bands, um, which I lead kind of, I didn't lead the concert, but I lead that ministry. Mm -hmm. And then about two or three weeks prior to that, we had our Christmas concert 
And so we did Handel's Messiah that was almost entirely classical music for that concert. There's an orchestra as well as an extra large choir. And there's at least two classical concerts every year between Christmas and Easter. So hmm. we're getting ready for the, the Easter one will be, man, it's coming up. It's March 30, 31st is Easter. So this you're year, preparing so. for that one, right? You're preparing the music for that one. I think I'm still recovering from the concerts recently. So <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I'm even mentally <laughs> ready to start preparing, but I should, yes, pretty soon. We should be ready. But we have um, a fantastic um, choir director. So she kind of handles the concerts for the classical music. And I fit in as she, as she needs me. Okay. All right. Now, uh, what do, how do you see your role in Los Angeles, Los Angeles musical community? Because I know that's a, that's the place where everything happens. There's a lot going on here, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So my primary roles, it's funny, we had the All Bog concert just last Friday. And I feel as though I'm kind of the way Bach's role was when he was when he was alive, um, mm. very busy in the church music scene. I'm going to be uh, running a rehearsal this evening, um, you know, preparing, accompanying choirs, doing some composing and arranging here and there. Not anywhere close as much as Bach was doing, but I, I dabble a little. That's amazing, playing, Bach. Playing organ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, playing organ as well, of course. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I was talking with a friend of mine just this morning and um i was just saying how, how blessed i am that every week i, I basically play for two thousand people and i get to wow. uh, bring share my music between two churches to about two thousand people and hopefully uh touch their hearts and, and and lead them closer to god and it's it's really a blessing in that way for me now, before, because, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get a treat from Matt. He's going to play something for us. But before you do, let me ask you this thing. Um, do you have a recording out? Have you made a, a, an album of, you know? Uh, I have not as there? much as I, as, as I probably should have. I think probably, I do have a YouTube channel, Making Music Daily. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll find some recordings. I think it's probably mostly organ, but. There's there are some piano um, works as well, but it's some it's definitely something that I'm interested in doing. Mm -hmm. I just finished uh, my doctorate last year, and now I finally kind of have time to some time to, about, to make some music. Right. What, well, what, we right, should talk. Projects? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is the start yeah. of something here. Oh, who knows, right? So tell us, what piece are you going to play for us? Is it a Bach? It is a Bach. Yes, uh, this is uh, a work that Bach wrote. Um, it was originally for orchestra. It's from his 29th cantata, which um, the title of that cantata is Thank You, Lord, Now We Thank You. And this is the symphonia. So the, the cantata begins with the orchestra playing this orchestra work and the 19th century French composer Alexandre Guillemot transcribed it for organ solo and um, it's a it's a G major it's very festive very virtuosic and uh, it's a lot of fun to play oh we're ready let's do it okay all right <laughs> let me just adjust uh, this mic out of the picture a little bit sure Oh, we can see his feet too. Wow. We get to see his little toes. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Enjoy that. That was so beautiful. Wow, that was beautiful. I know you 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 guys enjoyed as well. It was so beautiful. Oh, the power of the organ. I mean, you can feel every beat. It was just really beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Oh, my pleasure. Jeez. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a great, great instrument and Bach knew what he was doing. That's for he sure. He certainly do, and you are masterful at playing it. It, it is just wonderful. Thank you. Which leads Thank me you. to this question. So classical music is generally not known to be inclusive. Do you think the door doors are slowly opening in this genre of music, you know, for, I would specifically say for minorities? I do. I do think they're opening. I've seen a lot of intentional uh, efforts being made by um, different organizations. Uh, it's the NANM, National Association of Negro Musicians, is one of mm -hmm. them um, that has been not only trying to encourage uh, classical musicians um, within the Black race, but uh, especially young people. Um, they have scholarship opportunities, uh, competitions, um, things of that nature. Right here in Los Angeles, there is the, uh, let's see, so many acronyms to remember, the um, ICOLA, Intercity Youth Orchestra of Los Angeles, which is okay. the largest um, black, and it might be a Latino as well, youth orchestra in the United States, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, programs like uh, the Sphinx uh, Performing Arts Organization. And a lot of these organizations have helped me personally when I was coming up. Um, as, a, right. as a kid, as a youth, and a lot of, yeah, lots of different groups are, are definitely looking out. Um, I, I still wish I saw saw more um, more minorities, um, more women uh, organists. I think maybe we could do a better job of encouraging more more right. female black black organists, for instance. But there are mm -hmm. there are, you, you'll find fantastic musicians of all different mm -hmm. races and. All looking like whatever. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, or more conductors as well. I mean, there's a few yeah. black conductors, but not too many. Yeah. And um, it's a shame because when it comes to talent, boy, we are full of talent. And and I think uh, you deprive so many when you're not inclusive of all people with such great talent. So I'm glad the door is open. And, and, and boy... It, they should be so privileged to have someone like you with your talent. And listen, you need to get your own sound out there so we can buy it. it it's beautiful. All right. So um, uh, let's talk about you and your artistic process. We just saw this beautiful sound, specifically the way you approach a musical score. 
Can you walk us through those process real quick and, you know, let us, you know, how, how do you process that? Sure. So it, I can take the piece that I just played. I think it's important, first of all, to, to know something about the composer. Mm -hmm. um, the composers, you know, whether they're alive or dead, they're, they were the brains behind the operation. Um, I'm mm -hmm. just now taking it from there. But to, to study their composer, to, to know if they've written any articles or, or ha have said anything specifically about the piece that you're about to begin uh, studying, um, to understand the genre. What is, if you're playing a, a fugue, what is a fugue? If you're playing a sonata, what is a sonata, a prelude? You know, what is a scherzo? Um, understanding these different elements and um, understanding how, how they traditionally have been played, not just so that you can sound authentic Bach, because I think that's kind of what ends up being the default motivation. You want to make sure you sound like Bach. But I think more than that, when you study people who have done it before, they've gone through a lot of the, the groundwork to understand what sounds good. So on the organ, for instance, all these little white pegs, all those little white pegs are, are mm -hmm, called stops. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. all different sounds. There's, there are flutes, there are trumpets, there are um, sounds that sound almost like a string. Um, and so you have to make decisions as an organist on which ones to use at which times during the piece. And so listening to uh, and understanding what has worked in the past can help to inform, not to dictate, because I think it's important that at the end of the day, as an artist, you, you, you figure out what makes most sense to you so that you're right. not just trying to copy something that's been done a, a thousand times already. Right. Um, but I think it's helpful to, to know the background of, of the performers and the, especially the composer that went before you. Mm -hmm. Right. One of the reasons why um, we focus cloud record music on um, music that inspire uplift um, is our intention, and we, we sort of gear it more towards um, the contemporary, classical contemporary music. Um, it, you know, I think we can change the sound that's in our community that is pretty, you know, negative, and, and that's my intention. And I believe if we expose more of our youth to what you do and the type of sound that we're trying to um, expose them to, I think they would love it. There's something about this type of music that just, first of all, when you play the, or it gives you such energy and you could just feel it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I think it would be great for young people to be exposed and you realize, well, there's just one type of sound, but they're a different type of sound and they all make you feel so wonderful and it's positive and it's not putting anyone down, you know, so it's yeah. uplifting one's spirit, it touches one's yes. soul. So I'm, I'm just so happy when I listen to, to, to your sound or sound like yours, which is why we focus on those kind of um, music. So I'm so grateful to have you here tonight. Now, uh, Matt, Obviously, people are going to want to follow you, and you said you're on YouTube only because you're not into the social media thing, but you're on YouTube, right? So share with us again your YouTube uh, channel, so at least we can connect with you there. Sure, yes. It's uh, called Making Music Daily, like my last name, D-A-L-E-Y. Um, if you just go on YouTube and you type that, you'll see my face, and um <laughs> You'll see some some videos. Hopefully, uh, many more to come. Uh, you, you're yes. absolutely spot on about my personality in terms of social media. I I am I'm usually trying to resist getting the the next social media. And get, there's so many out there these days. But that's the world yeah. we live in, and um, you know, you gotta embrace. And you're it a musician, way. so you gotta get in it. Absolutely. Can't avoid it. Um. Is there any way or the way they can reach you? Get what's coming maybe to your church if they're in California and see you play? I mean, is, I don't know if that's okay with you. If somebody just come and Absolutely. visit your church. Yeah. Anytime. And give us the name of the Seventh day Adventist church that you play, perform. Yes. Yeah. So there's two churches. One is uh, Vallejo Drive Seventh day Adventist Church. And that's spelled B A L L E J O Drive Seventh day Adventist Church. That one's in Glendale. 
And then um, that's every Saturday. And then on Sundays, uh, it is Lake Avenue Church. They're, they both, both of the churches are named after streets. So it's easy to figure out where they <laughs> it's are. It's easy to remember. <laughs> right. Well, um, you have just, you know, give us such a wonderful evening. I love a taste of your talent. I wish we had a long time to hear more of your great sound. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, make sure that you follow Matt. This way, if he should post any of his work, you can hear it. And when he decided to put out his first, you know, piece on an album or a single, we'll make sure it comes back to talk about it, right? And so, Sounds Matt, great. we just thank you for spending this time with us. We, I'm so grateful and I'm so thrilled. It was just beautiful. Thank you for having me and thank you for doing what you're doing to, to inspire so many people. And I'm just honored that I get to be a part of it today. Thank you. And um, to you gentlemen out there and ladies, please remember to subscribe to Cloud Record Music Podcast. Share us and you must like us as well. And um, tell your friends about it. OK. And remember to follow Matthew as well. Subscribe to his uh, YouTube channel. And so we want to thank everyone for joining us tonight and um, have a good night, everyone. Be blessed and peace. Matt? Take care.